Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why you should join ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps. It's something I did in college. I went to school for free, they paid for everything. And it's a program at universities or colleges that set you up for success to commission into the military of any branch. And um, you go into the military, I went into the army as an officer, as a lieutenant with a commission. It was a great experience, I did four years in the army and I got out and I owe a lot to the ROTC program. So I'm gonna talk about my experience, why I think it's great, not for everyone, but for a lot of people. Um, and it's actually one of those things in universities and colleges that a lot of people don't know about. It's a way to go to school. Um, it's paid for with a military commitment afterwards, but it's a great program that puts you in a position of management and leadership. And it really set me up to be in the position I am right now. So the reason I kind of bring this, this topic up is because recently we were doing the Baton Death March at White Sands, New Mexico, 26.2 mile race. And I realized that we had a huge ROTC military presence there. I mean, there were probably like over 50 people that walked up to me during the race. People were welcome to Steph when she was waiting for me to finish. Um, talking about the program, the videos, and how from watching my videos and finding out about ROTC, they decided to join themselves. And it's been a great experience for them and their values and everything they've done so far. And I thought, Man, I gotta bring this up in a video topic because it's one of those things that a lot of people don't know about until they get to college or after they graduate and it's an opportunity that a lot of people miss out on. So kind of like my experience with the ROTC program, I was a junior in high school and I had I had family in the military and some of them were officers, some were enlisted, so I knew kind of experiences from both sides of the house. And I didn't know what I really wanted to do in college or after college yet. I had an interest in nutrition, for a brief period of time, I wanted to enlist in the military. I had a cousin that was active duty, and it was a time when the war was very kinetic. He was going to Afghanistan, Iraq, and I saw kind of the respect he, he gained from the community and people when he was coming back from deployments or on R&R. &R. And for a period of time, I wanted to enlist. And I talked to my uncle, I talked to family and my parents, and we came down to the conclusion of, hey, we should look into ROTC, which I had no clue anything about at the time. So ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps, is a program that some colleges, some universities offer where they teach you kind of the things you would learn at basic training. Um, they give you some experience in leadership and management and they prepare you to commission into the military after graduating to be an officer, a junior officer, a lieutenant in the army in my case, um, and you get put in that position. So to be an officer, you need to have a bachelor's degree. There's different routes you can take. One is ROTC. You can go through OCS. You can go to a, a military academy like West Point or the Naval Academy, and that's how you become an officer. So when I was a junior in high school, I applied for the, the National ROTC Scholarship, which at that point was not as competitive as it is right now. Um, I applied, and the application process was just you go online, you fill out the application, you search you know, ROTC, um, four-year scholarship, you fill that out, you do a physical fitness test, you do an interview with some professor of military science in your local area, and um, that's all I had to do at the time, and then you wait to hear back. And before graduating high school, I found out I received a four-year active duty Army ROTC scholarship, which paid for my full tuition. Now, you are awarded the scholarship, and then you choose what school you want to go to. As long as you are selected to or accepted into that university or college, and they have an ROTC program, that tuition's paid for. So the benefits of me going to a school in Western Pennsylvania on an ROTC scholarship, my tuition was covered, my books every semester were covered, and I was paid a monthly stipend for my freshman year and my senior year. So freshman year, I was receiving, I believe, $300 tax-free a month and by the time I graduated my senior year, I was getting $500 tax-free dollars a month. It's a great program to put you in a position to set you up for success, especially if you're going to college, like in my case, where I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to serve the country for my four-year term. And you get to go to college, it's paid for, you get leadership management experience, you get the commission in the military, army in my case, and it was the best thing, the best decision I've probably ever made. And I don't think I'd be sitting here as a business owner, um, if I have not made that decision to, to join and apply for ROTC. So here's my experience. I was a senior in high school. 
I was awarded this ROTC scholarship, and I had no clue what to expect. So I'll kind of paint a picture of what an ROTC program, like where I went to school, I went to IUP, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, which is out in Western PA near Pittsburgh. This is our typical schedule. So we had PT as a freshman, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That was for like an hour. Uh, it was pretty, pretty generalized PT that was catered to everyone in the program. I had one class a week, which we would talk about different topics, um, such as military operations and tactics, very broad general topics. I would best describe it as if you go to basic training, which is condensed into a period of time, ROTC teaches you those same principles, values, uh, skill level one stuff over you know, months and years, which has also some more officer specific tasks like operation orders, leadership management, stuff like that. So it's PT three times a week. It is one class a week and then a two hour lab on, we had it on Thursdays, where we do a lot of our hands on stuff. We get into first aid, we get into you know the medical stuff, we get weapons, break down weapons, sometimes we go shooting. Um, and that was pretty much it for freshman and sophomore year. It was that schedule. Maybe once a semester we would go on a field training exercise for a weekend where we'd get some, uh, some hands-on experience with more weapons, um, setting up, you know, patrol bases. We would go to ranges. We would do land navigation out in the woods. We'd go to like a local uh, military base, and just hands-on stuff that we weren't getting experience on in the classroom. So that was freshman and sophomore year. And the thing with an ROTC program is, even though I was awarded the ROTC scholarship and I was getting tuition paid for and I was getting paid monthly, you don't have to commit to the program until your junior year. So junior year is when you have to contract. So juniors and seniors are committed to the program. They sign a contract that says, I'm going to go into the military. I officially commit after I graduate. Say I was awarded the scholarship before going to college. And at the end of sophomore year, I was saying, hey, I don't want to do this anymore. This is not for me. I don't have to sign that contract, but I have to pay back the money that I was awarded from the government, if that makes sense. So all the tuition that was paid for freshman and sophomore year, the stipend that I was awarded at $300 a month from freshman and sophomore year, if I decide not to contract, I have to give that money back to the government, but I don't go into the military afterwards. So you have that option to, to decide. It's almost like a testing it out freshman and sophomore year of college before you have to contract your junior year. Now between your junior and senior year um, school year, during that summer you go to what's called advanced camp. Now when I was in, we went to Fort Lewis, Washington, but now it's at Fort Knox, Kentucky. At advanced camp, you're tested. So you're tested on your land navigation, your PT, your leadership abilities on patrols. Um, it's an overall assessment of how well you perform in relation to the other cadets in the nation. Every ROTC cadet in the nation between their junior and senior years goes to advanced camp to be assessed. Now, like, why do you get assessed? By the time you're, I think it's the end of your junior year, you decide if you wanna go active duty, reserves, or national guard, and you decide what your branch wants to be. So whether you wanna be an aviator, you wanna fly helicopters, you wanna be an infantry officer, you wanna be a finance officer, you wanna go medical services, you get to select what you wanna do, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get it. So that's what this assessment does. All throughout college, they take your GPA, they take your physical fitness test scores, they do, or they take in consideration your extracurricular activities, what you participated in, whether that's color guard or volunteer service hours, stuff like that. They take all that into consideration, plus your assessment at advanced camp, and you get a raw score and ranked in the nation compared to every other cadet. Now then they take that, that listing of the jobs you wanna do in the military and they balance that off of that assessment and you find out you know, what you do in the military. So I was an infantry officer. I was awarded the branch of infantry. Now say I wanted to be an infantry officer, but my GPA score was bad, my, my PT test score was bad and I assessed awful at advanced camp. I wouldn't have been able to get infantry. I probably wouldn't even have been active duty. Being awarded active duty is you know, something you have to work towards as well, but getting the exact branch you want is something you also have to work towards. So it's working not only your junior and senior year, but those four years of college to get the best assessment score possible to allow you to be active duty and the branch you want to be, which the top ones are always like aviation, med services, infantry, 
armor, those always go the fastest. The way our program was set up, and I'm sure a lot of programs are similar, is the freshman and sophomore are in the, the learning curve. So they're like the students. The juniors are kind of pulled from the program and they're doing their own training because they're doing training that is specific to advanced camp, which at like Fort Knox are now. They're trying to, or the cadre, the instructors who are active duty military members, are training the juniors to assess as well as possible. So they're working on patrols, they're working on medical, they're doing extra PT, stuff like that. The seniors are planning all the operations, all the classes, all the labs for the freshman and sophomore. So you're a staff that's planning the training for the underclassmen uh, for, for the weekly labs. And that's the way it's set up. I commissioned and I graduated in 2013, May of 2013. So I went to IEP in 2009, I did four years. I got a degree in nutrition, a bachelor's in nutrition. And then I graduated, commissioned as an infantry officer. And in October of 2013, I went down to Fort Benning, Georgia, did all my schooling where I did infantry officer basic course. I did ranger school, airborne school, Bradley leader course. I was at Fort Benning, Georgia for a year before going to Fort Hood, Texas, where I was stationed during my time in the military. That's kind of my experience with the ROTC department. And like I said, I owe a lot of what I've done and accomplished in my short time during college and after college to the ROTC department, uh, to the military in general and everything they've provided and, and gave to me and taught me. But I really wanna focus on why you specifically should join ROTC. Now, it's not something that is for everyone. Not everyone is cut out to be in the military and specifically not everyone is cut out to be an officer. With being an officer, they're comes a lot of responsibility. Um, there's a lot of you know, sound judgment abilities that you have to be able to make in a short amount of time. And I've seen people succeed, I've seen people fail in ROTC, at iBullock, as platoon leaders in my first unit. Uh, I've seen people that just weren't cut out for it. So it's not something that is for everyone. But if I put myself back into when I was in high school in that position, and I look at if there was one decision I made when I was younger that put me into a position of success and on a trajectory of making the right decisions, it was applying for the Army ROTC scholarship. And here's why. I was at a time in college where I didn't know what I wanted to do as a full-time job in life. I didn't have the direction that I have now of where I wanted to be or what I wanted to be doing. And I saw the military as an opportunity to do something where I was serving my country and I decided to join when things were very kinetic and I knew I wanted to serve. And that's all I really knew at the time. I didn't realize or know how much it would teach me in those eight years from ROTC to getting out of the military and how much I would learn about people, management, leadership, and myself specifically. Truly learned a lot about myself in those, in those years and during that time. And I owe a lot to ROTC. So if you were in my position where you're in high school or you don't know exactly what you wanna do, but you have the willingness and you feel the need to serve your country, you want leadership management experience and you want responsibility. You wanna be put in a position of responsibility right after graduating college where your responsibility of the lives of the sons and daughters of you know, mothers and fathers of America, then it might be a great thing to look into yourself. You get to work out all the time. You have to be in great shape. Responsibility right after graduating. You learn excellent, excellent, excellent leadership management skills and you get experience right away. And you work with some of the hardest working men and women in the United States of America. In my case, in the United States Army. So that's my take on why you should join ROTC or at least look into the military as an officer route if you feel the need to serve you want to go to college and you want to experience in that field. Like I said, it's not for everyone. Being an officer is not for everyone. It's not cut out for everyone. But if you have that drive, you have that motivation to you know, lead people, make something happen, it's definitely something to look into. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Just my take on ROTC and why I owe so much of my success to the program itself, joining the Army, and then going on this trajectory. So... Cheers, and we'll see you guys in the next video.